Hello everybody, welcome into the final score. I'm Ryan Marshall. Scott Abraham has the night off. Well, Laurel and Lake Forest have both started out slow out the gate, but you know what? Don't let records fool you. These two teams are incredibly gritty, scrappy, dive all over the floor chasing a loose ball and will fight to the very end. Laurel and Lake Forest is our game of the week. To the dog pound we go. These two teams with a matinee special today. Late fourth quarter, the Bulldogs with a slim four point lead looking to ice the game, but Lake's Terrence Best with the steal. The Spartans quickly the other way needing some points, but they come up empty handed with several misses close at the basket. Then Lake's Shakori Bray will miss two critical free throws as well. And down at the other end, the Bulldogs' Deontay Knox. Oh yeah, he'll knock down one of two free throws. That was good enough to ice the game. Laurel is a 58-52 winner. Some other scores to tell you about. Cape Henlopen narrowly beats Arundel 59-57. And Caesar Rodney destroys Apoquinimic 75-38. The Laurel and Lake Forest girls were in action in Felton this afternoon. The Spartans red hot from the outside. It all started by the pure shooting of Gabrielle Cubbage, knocks down this triple. Then Cubbage wide open this time, lines it up, money. Lake Forest off to a great start. The Lady Bulldogs though not to be denied. Devaney Johnson spots up and drains the trifecta from up top. Laurel showing some range as well, but the Bulldogs with the ball again. Quick hands by the Lake defense. Watch this beautiful pass up ahead and an even prettier finish by Quantisha Pitts. The Lady Spartans are 49 to 41 winners at home. Well, the hardwood wasn't the only place where you could find some good action across Delmarva. There was plenty on the mats as well. Delmar traveled to Snow Hill this evening. In the first matchup, it was the 113 pound weight class between Delmar's Kenneth Holler and the Eagles Camden Fisher. Fisher right here able to pin Holler to the ground, which scored him two points. And when it was all said and done, Camden Fisher, he would end up winning this match. Now the next match in the 120 pound weight class, the Wildcats, Josh Wood faced Snow Hill's Naheem Knight. Now watch this takedown by Wood. Just, just flips him on the mat. That'll score him a point. Then the Eagles Knight comes back with a takedown of his own, forces the opponent to the outside of the circle, gaining him two points. Snow Hill, though, they won the overall competition 45 to 27. Elsewhere, Queen Anne's beats St. Mary's 39 to 36, and Sussex Central defeats Wilmington Charter 57 to 18. Still to come on the final score, we're giving college basketball a little love. Maryland had a home non-conference matchup with Stony Brook. Plus, the Blue Hens look to give the fans at the Bob Carpenter Center something to cheer about. You know, a win would help, but did they get it? I'll give you the answer next. I'm Ryan H. In for Scotty Abe. Stick and stay. The final score will continue right after this. Welcome back to the final score. The high school basketball is in the books. Now we turn to some college action. The Delaware men's basketball team has lost seven of its last eight games and are falling faster than the temperatures outside. But tonight they were looking for a little home cooking and a much needed win. The Blue Ends hosting Penn at the Bob Carpenter Center. Delaware's Jamel Hagens had a great game tonight. He scores two of his team high 18 points in the paint. And then on the defensive end, Hagen sending this ball into the stands. He commanded the paint tonight. Delaware taking care of business at both ends. Marvin King Davis with the baseline jumper. And UD, they get the 83 to 60 win. Maryland back home facing Stony Brook. The Seawolves trying to live inside the paint. Jamil Warney misses. Eric McAllister strong on the board and the putback plus the foul. Stony Brook down four early. The Terps, though, unfazed by the challenge, breaking traps, and then watch Seth Allen lock and load from three-point range. Maryland up double digits at this point, and then, you know what? They kept the foot on the gas. Charles Mitchell with the strong move inside. Watch this. Yes, and one. Terps are a 76-69 winner. One other men score to pass along to you. Salisbury loses at Division I, William & Mary, 82-49. Some women's scores to tell you about. UMES beat UMBC 51 to 45. Corona Roach led the team with 23 points. And Delaware State loses at Towson 69 to 61. One more score to give to you. South Dakota State beats Georgetown 64 to 58. Well, let's talk about some NBA now. The Washington Wizards, 
you got to love them. Their record, though, is 3-20. and 20. But I tell you what, they play extremely hard. But the wins just aren't coming. Washington was in Motown tonight, hoping not to leave on a sour note. John Wall sitting on the bench for this one as the Wizards take on the Detroit Pistons. To the first quarter, the Wizards' Jordan Crawford slices his way to the basket. What a nice move right there in the tough finish in the lane. Washington down a dime. Then his game really got out of hand from the Wizards. Rodney Stuckey drills a three-pointer, and it's 40-18 to 18 Pistons. Later in the second quarter, somehow looking to just stop the bleeding, Kev Kevin Sever Serapin helps with the runner in the lane. It wasn't enough. Washington loses 100-68. to 68. The Philadelphia 76ers hosting Atlanta. First quarter, watch this play. The Sixers' Thaddeus Young goes behind the back all the way to the hoop for two. And then watch as the camera goes on Thaddeus, and you're wondering why he's running so hard, and that's because quickly back the other way, the Hawks with the alley-oop to Josh Smith at the other end, and this game tied early. To the second quarter now, Atlanta trying to feed the post. Jason Richardson snatches it away. Philly running the other way, and it's Young again on the slam. Philadelphia wins 99-80. to 80. This Sunday afternoon, the Washington Redskins square off with the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, the Skins will most likely have starting quarterback Robert Griffin III back in their lineup. And the team is looking to win their sixth game in a row in that push to make the playoffs. That game starts at 1 p.m. and can be seen on our sister station, Fox 21. Now, the Baltimore Ravens have a home game against the New York Giants, and that kicks off at 4.25 p.m. That's the doubleheader game on Fox 21. Thank goodness for sister stations. The Ravens trying to lock up the AFC North division and a win on Sunday would do that indeed. Plus, the team, they really need to rebound from their recent three-game slide. Well, that's it for the final score. I'm Ryan Marshall. The Late Show with David Letterman is next. Tonight's guests include actress Naomi Watts and a musical performance by Darlene Love. And be sure to watch WBOC this morning with Aisha Khan and John Trout. Hey, have a great weekend. Good night and stay warm.